This is the Soulfully Casual Podcast hosted by Matty Ice. And now, your host, Matty Ice. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Soulfully Casual Podcast. I am your host, Matty Ice, and it's great to be back. It's great to have you back. So I think this time I'm going to start by opening the curtain a little bit. Uh, you know, kind of peeking behind some behind the scenes kind of things. And normally when I do these shows and I record, uh, I'm, I'm recording them all in one shot and scheduling them to, you know, release on specific days so that I can have content come out throughout the week. Uh, and a drawback to doing that, I would say, is, you know, not being able to react to something in real time or, you know, maybe tackling a subject that either hasn't happened yet or, or something like that. But just to give you some insight, today is Super Bowl Sunday. I talked about this on Friday, and I kind of led into a more serious topic of domestic violence in football. Uh, but you know, this time I want to talk about the Super Bowl as it relates to some other topics because the Super Bowl, even though there are heavy topics that go along with it, you know, there's some excitement to it. Um, if you're listening to this right now and you're a fan of the NFL, you know that the Super Bowl is the most important game that the NFL puts on. Uh, not only you know does it crown their champion of their long season. But it is probably one of, if not the most watched programs internationally every single year. Millions and millions of people tune in. And when I say millions, it's not like one, two or three million. It's in the tens of millions of people. And they watch all over the world, no matter where they are, you know, near, far to the United States, they are watching. Uh, they're watching for more than football. They're watching for the commercials and other things like that. But it's really... Uh, a moment for everybody to get together specifically in the united states super bowl parties are a huge uh, undertaking they're a huge deal they're very common and that's why i wish the super bowl was on saturday so that we could all kind of do what we wanted to do and not have to go to work the next day um but when i think about this particular game you know at least or at least this particular game uh the concept of legacy and reputation come up because there is sort of this idea in sports in general with teams that get to the pinnacle of their sport that it sort of defines a lot of legacies, whether it's a legacy of an organization, a legacy of a franchise, legacy of a city, things like that. To give you an idea of what I mean by that, for Boston, growing up in New England, I was a Boston sports fan and still am. And for the Red Sox, they had a legacy of being losers. They didn't win a World Series championship for 86 years. And now they've won four since they broke through that barrier in 2004. So the legacy has changed quite a bit. But for the longest time, it was a legacy of sadness, a legacy of despair, loss, things like that. Um, but this year's rendition of the Super Bowl, there's a lot of talk around legacy because the two quarterbacks specifically that are in the Super Bowl, uh, one is Tom Brady. And if you've been watching the NFL at any point in the last 20 years, you know who he is. You feel one way or the other about him, but you know who he is and what he brings to the table. And on the other side of that is Patrick Mahomes, who is sort of the new Brady in a way, but far more talented, at least in terms of quarterbacking skills. And Tom Brady comes in with a reputation. He comes in with a legacy that precedes him. And at least on the football field, because I think, uh, you know, you could feel a certain way about somebody personally versus on the field, but that's, that's another story. Um, but he's been playing in the league. I think this is his 19th or 20th season, and this is now his 10th Super Bowl appearance. And that's not only vastly more than any other player that's ever played, it's vastly more than any other franchise out there. I mean, we're talking, he has been to more Super Bowls by himself than any franchise in NFL history. He's won six of the nine appearances that he has to date. Today would be his 10th. And that's why I kind of gave you a little peek behind the curtain because I don't know what the outcome of the game is as I'm recording this. You all are going to hear this the day after the Super Bowl, you're going to know what the outcome of the game is. At this point, I don't. So I wanted to put that out there so you didn't think that I was a crazy person for giving these numbers and you all know what the score was, what the outcome of the game was, and you can make some, uh, you know, have some feelings about what happened. And I just don't have that luxury right now. So that's why I wanted to put that out there. But uh, no matter the outcome of the game, Tom will always be considered one of the greatest football players and possibly the greatest winner in terms of athletes of all time. If you think about him compared to other contemporaries, uh, or not even contemporaries, other you know le legends in their sport, he, I would say, just based off of his winning, is at the same places like a Serena Williams, a Michael Jordan, a Babe Ruth, a Wayne Gretzky, people like that. 
when you think about the greatest of their sports, I think he's always going to be considered that. And yes, you know, Jerry Rice is, I think, also in that discussion. But my point being is that he has reached this pantheon. It's almost like uh, being one of the, the Greek gods, um, you know, being almost Zeus-like, so to speak, because he has done so much winning and has had such a longevity to his career that his legacy has been built over time and, and he comes with it no matter what happens, right? His legacy is what it is. And then on the other side, like I said, is Patrick Mahomes. And right now, I would say his legacy is still in its infancy to the point that he won a Super Bowl last year. He could win a second one, but there's so much time left. There's so much potential. He has not even come close to his prime or anywhere near his ceiling in terms of talent, in terms of winning and everything. And the situation that he is in is just tailor-made for a long career similar to Brady's if he's, you know, he obviously stays healthy. Um, but he has blossomed on the scene the last few years as this generational talent. Uh, and he has been racking up accolades to really match those skills. MVPs, touchdown records, Super Bowl wins, Super Bowl MVPs, and he can add to that in tonight's game. And so both of these guys come in, one with a cemented legacy of, uh, you know, a lot of accolades and a lot of years of winning, and another one who's coming in and building that resume as we're speaking. Um, I would say that... You know, for, for Mahomes, um, the outcome will add to his legacy in some way. I don't think that he necessarily loses anything by losing because of who he's playing. But by winning, he obviously takes another step toward that, that category of the Jordans, the Bradys, the Wayne Gretzkys of the world in terms of sports. Uh, and obviously, if he wins, he beats Tom Brady. And you know, I, that's why I don't think a loss takes anything away from him. Um, but it's interesting because sports players, celebrities, you know, people like that, they live in this sort of unique space where a lot of times we can separate the art from the artist, so to speak. And there are definitely cases in which that is not true. Uh, I think Bill Cosby is a great example of somebody that it's really difficult to do that. It's really difficult to say this is a this person is a great actor or actress, even though we know they're a scummy human being or something like that. But I think in sports, it tends to happen a lot more often. I think sports players have to go to a certain level in order to be uh, considered a really terrible person because the culture of at least football, in, in my mind, the way that I've seen it the last few years is that the culture of winning really dictates the day. And somebody like a Tom Brady can, you know, leave Bridget Moynihan, for instance, uh, while she's, you know, while they have a child together, and it sort of gets brushed under the the rug because since then he has created a family with Giselle. He's done a lot of winning, and it sort of puts a polish on it. It puts a shine on it. Uh, I think also the fact that he's white does that too. But that's again another discussion. Um, but now, you know, sports players that we know for their on-field reputation and their winning resume, we kind of assume that they're good people. We put them in that category, and you know we. We, I call us commoners, we, we aren't really afforded that same dis disassociation as these celebrities and athletes are. If we are accused of something, even if it's not true, and even if it goes to court and we are you know, found not guilty, that stays with us, that stain stays with us. Um, you know, and even so, so often um, that you know, idea of a first impression, we always say that, that what's the saying, uh, you know, a first impression can ruin everything or whatever it is. And it's so true that if somebody were to meet you on your worst day or when you're having just a bad moment and you are not who you normally are as far as personality, you're not nice, you're not cordial and you're just sort of distracted or you're just having a bad day, that stays with you forever in that person's mind or that group's mind. Because if you have this bad moment in front of a, you know, a group of people, they tend to you know, carry that with them in terms of how they view you. And I can tell you from personal experience in my you know, workplace that my reputation has suffered because uh, you know, certain people wanted a candidate of theirs for a job to look better. And so they put me down telling lies and untruths uh, to make sure that that person got a job over me. And I was not able to defend myself. I was not able to give my side of the story. And that reputation carried with me for a really long time. I was known as somebody who was defined by those lies, defined by those rumors, and never really given a chance to say, hey, that's not me. I felt as if I couldn't break through this barrier, that all of a sudden now, 
I was known as a person who I wasn't. I was known, at least in the professional sense, as a person that I wasn't. And in some ways, it was an extension into my personal life because the untruths, the disinformation that was spread about me had a lot to do with my personality. And one of the things I've said in previous episodes, and I'll continue to say until the end of time, is that I'm very much a what you see is what you get from me. There is not going to be a, a persona that I'm going to give you. There is not going to be some false uh, person that you're going to see. I am who I am. And I know that the information that was spread about me was untrue because it just was the antithesis of how I am. Uh, you know, telling people that I put down people's ideas, that I overtly am telling them that they're terrible. I don't do that. I am somebody who, even if I don't like you, I may want to make sure that you don't know that. Because to me, it doesn't help humankind to be overtly mean, to be overtly that way. And so when I hear this is being spread about me, you know, it really felt like I, you know, was being painted as this person who I'm not. And one of the things I've always strived for in my professional life is that my reputation is um, known for my work, that I'm adding value, that I'm doing quality work. And this seemed like it was this seemed as if it was defining who I was, not by the work that I was doing or the quality work that I was doing, but by rumors and other sort of, you know, extracurricular activities. And that stained my reputation. It made it difficult for my legacy to become better than I, you know, better than it was and more than what I wanted it to be. Uh, and thankfully, you know, that situation was overcome and it was overcome by being able to put my head down and start to add value and start to do quality work because I was not going to let this define me. I was going to either right these wrongs if I found out what it was that people actually thought was an affront to their uh, you know, ego, an affront to their uh, you know, emotions, whatever it was, and rectify it by making sure that I was the person that I always am, what I was all about. I was able to take my destiny back by gaining, you know, traction and making sure that my legacy, my reputation was going to be defined by me and not by these untruths. All in all, that was a good experience. And I think that's a good time to sort of stop and reflect a little bit, but I also want to make it a little bit of an announcement. Uh, I, I put this on our social media pages and everything, but I think it's good to know that, um, you know, this, this show has moved to sort of a, a new platform, so to speak. And this is part of the passion project that's involved in this show that I am trying to make a larger uh, undertaking. And what I've done is created a website now that not only houses this show, but houses other shows by creators that I'm involved with or creators that I want to make sure get the same spotlight that this show gets. And right now you can find this show uh, if you go to www.maddieicemedia or you just Google Maddie Ice Media and you will find the website. Um, I decided that it was time to have a more global presence and I wanted to make sure that not only was it easy to find in multiple places, but that again, other people's content was, was easy to find as well. Uh, on the website, you can find many different things. We have a podcast library. We have a YouTube channel library. Uh, within the podcast library, you can find shows that I've talked about on my show, including the manual, which is uh, done by my friend Cleve. Uh, political football I've talked about. Me, Cleve, and Dave get into it on the NFL. To uh, you know, This week will be our last show for a while, but you can get all the past episodes there. Uh, Cowboy Season, which is a rebrand of our Mine and Cleveland's podcast, The Deep. We're going to be coming back very soon with some new content on a regular basis. Now that we're freeing up some time, you can find that. And then also Cotton in the Rocket Ship by uh, Lennox Mars Jr., who is uh, currently writing a book. So all of that is there. Uh, my sneaker YouTube page for Matty Ice Sneakers can also be found, and I'm looking to add some other creators there as well. Uh, you know, it's really a place where you can find any and all content that is associated with, with us that you want. And I like to think of it as a menu. You can sort of pick and choose what you'd like. You can either listen to my show, all of them, none of them, whatever it is. Uh, but as you're listening, as you're going to that website, you know, make sure to share it. Make sure to use that as the uh, medium in which you, you know, are sharing it because we have forms to fill out for people who want to ask about the shows or be on the shows. And we're trying to use it as a launching pad for bigger things. So definitely take a look at that. Also, in terms of connection, I always talk about that. Definitely make sure to check out our email, soulfully.casual at gmail.com and our Instagram pages, which are Soulfully Casual Podcast and Maddie Ice Media 21. Those are our Instagram feeds. And also you can find me on Twitter at Soulfully Casual. Okay, so right now 
I talked about reputation. I talked about legacy as it related to the Super Bowl. And I talked about how it related to my life. Now think about it in terms of your life, where you are at this point in your life, whether you're young or old or in the middle like I am. Are there incidences or decisions that were made along the way that you wish had gone different? Um, do you wish that you might not, you know, are there decisions that if they hadn't gone a certain way, you wouldn't be where you are? One thing about me that I think is really important to understand is I am a firm believer in things happen for a reason. When I look back at the narrative of my life, one thing or another, when you say, I wish that had gone different, and then you start to think about what would have happened had you done that. They broach the subject a lot in like time travel movies, whenever they say, don't touch anything, don't, you know, interact with anybody because a different interaction here or there, even the smallest micro interaction with somebody could change the course of your whole life. It could change the entire, you know, critical path to use a project management term that your life is on. And when I go back and think about those things, connections that I, you know, missed with people, uh, you know, opportunities to, to do certain projects or, or whatever it is, I wouldn't be where I am today, which means I wouldn't have met my wife, wouldn't have had my son. And honestly, I might not be doing this show. So there's so many things that can change just from one interaction or wishing that something had gone different. And I think, you know, I used that a little bit earlier, right? With my job, I talked about how my reputation was defined by disinformation. It was defined by something that I didn't want it to be defined by that I had no control over. But what I did have control over was how I reacted to it. And that's what really defined the moment because I put my head down and just decided that I was gonna continue to do what I was going to do. Yes, I got to a point where I thought I was not promotable, that I thought I had a scarlet letter on me and that I was just going to be stuck in this position forever. But I put my head down, I got better at my job, I learned how to be a manager, so many different things. And I got seasoned, I got experience. And it just caused me to now all of a sudden break through because I was being known again for my work. I was being known for the value that I was adding and the opportunities that I was given by the people that did support me, which there were people that did support me, uh, I allowed me to grow and shine. And especially when the chips were down, I was somebody that was now looked at as, hey, we need somebody who can get things done and we're gonna bring him in because we know that he can do it. I was better prepared for the promotion that I ended up getting as a result. And so all of it worked out the way that it was supposed to. All of it worked out the way that it should. Happens in my life. I'm the one who's in charge of my, my arc, you know, where I'm going. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not subject to being somebody else's, um, you know, pet, if you will. And if it doesn't work out at this job, that's why I'm doing this. This passion project of mine is in my control, in my hands. And that's why I created the website and just keep doing what I'm doing here because I'm the one who can truly define my legacy in the world. And it's not defined on a football field. It's not defined on a sports field the way that others are. And you know what? I'm definitely not going to be on the same level as the two guys I talked about earlier that are playing today. They have reached a portion of their profession, which is football, in which like less than 1% ever get to, right? And even the people that get there, they don't ever become what these two are going to become. Hall of Famers, legends, you know, their reputations precede them. And sure, there are a lot who are somewhere in between. They're either flamed out at that level and have no reputation as a football player and their life has now become what my life is like, or they're the Tom Brady's, Peyton Manning's of the world and so forth. And, you know, now, I you know, I think you look at um, what do you want to be, right? That doesn't mean I can't carve out a legacy for myself, even though I'm not on the same level as Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. However... I do have a circle of people in my life that I have influence on and who have influence on me, people we care about, family, friends. And once this pandemic is over and we can start going back to a more semblance of normal life, you know, I still have an opportunity to have a legacy. I still have an opportunity to continue to be the person that I want to be. Matty Ice is somebody, you know, I am somebody in this world and that reputation persona of mine as Matty Ice is is in its infancy the same way that Patrick Mahomes is and theoretically my reputation as who I am as a normal person outside of Matty Ice is about you know halfway there but it's still in its infancy because I still feel like I have so much to give to this world there's so much to give to the people in my life and I'm gonna be the one that defines that and I think it starts at home how can I be a good husband 
How can I be a good father? How can I be a good son, right? How can I be a good cousin, a good nephew, a good friend? If anybody who's listening is a friend of mine or has been a friend of mine before, you know that I strive to be the best that I can be. I want my reputation and legacy with you to be of somebody that you know is always there for you, even when I make mistakes or somebody that you know you can count on, you know, is there if you need somebody. That's what I want. Uh, I feel like my genuine personality is appealing and that right now, you know, I can do bigger things with it, that it's appealing to a lot more people, not just for money or entertainment value, but to make an impact, to have influence. And when I talked about things like weight loss, my journey through that, that's what I'm hoping for connection. I talk about connection on the show. That's what I want. And I'm just happy that I can, you know, come here, provide some candor to you and that it adds something to your life. It adds some value somewhere that you're deciding that I'm a voice that you want to listen to, not because I'm always right or because I always have the answers, but just because I'm somebody who you feel has some sort of some sort of a connection with and that you want to continue with me on this journey. Let's hope that that's what my reputation is when we're talking about this five, six, seven years from now. Uh, Another wonderful episode. I hope everybody is safe tonight with the Super Bowl. And I know that you're listening to this on Monday, so I hope you were safe last night. Um, You know, I hope you are around enough people that your bubble is still small and you're staying safe. And whatever you do tonight, whoever you hang out with or whoever you hung out with last night, make sure you cherish it. Because in the end, Your reputation is one thing, but also the connections that you've made is another. I thank you for listening to the show, and I will talk to you again on Wednesday.